next spring in Afghanistan, they'll leave the safety of their bases, where most Americans are now staying, and head out on combat missions. Here's General Nicholson. Yes, there will be greater risk, absolutely. So, uh, but we've been doing this the last few years with our special forces. Special forces, Green Berets who go out on counter-terror missions with Afghan commandos to track down Al-Qaeda and ISIS. They work in small teams, and the new advisors will do the same. We will move these teams to those units that are conducting offensive operations, and then uh, those teams will be backed up by U.S. combat enablers. Combat enablers. That includes everything from surveillance and medevac flights to artillery and airstrikes to support the American and Afghan troops. This will be a change for U.S. troops, who pretty much turned over the fight to the Afghans in 2014 and focused on training. But since then, the Taliban recaptured territory the Americans had won with hundreds of casualties. So, uh, but we've been doing this the last few years with our special forces. Special forces, Green Berets who go out on counter-terror missions with Afghan commandos to track down Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Nicholson said the Taliban have not lost any of that territory over the past year. Roughly one-third of the country is still under either Taliban control or being contested by the insurgents. That's why more American advisors are deploying to Afghanistan, and they'll boost the troop numbers from the current 11,000 to more than 14,000. In recent weeks, General Nicholson has labeled the war, now entering its 17th year, a stalemate. He was more optimistic today, given the more aggressive policy outlined by President Trump. We are on our way to a win. Nicholson said the military action is just one part of the effort to push the Taliban into peace talks. The U.S. is also going after Taliban financing, particularly its poppy crop that's turned into heroin. U.S. and Afghan airstrikes recently bombed opium processing plants, just some of the hundreds in southern Afghanistan. The Taliban have evolved as an insurgency over the years, Nicholson said. This is how he now describes them. A narco insurgency or criminal insurgency, if you will. But the general said the Taliban still have a veil of legitimacy as a religious group. They're able to pull in low-level fighters to join the cause. The U.S. estimates the street value of Afghanistan's opium trade at about $60 billion. 2017 looks like it will be a record for opium production in the country. That's despite years of U.S. efforts to combat the drugs in Afghanistan. In one of three ways. At times, it's tried to eradicate poppy fields. At other times, it's encouraged Afghan farmers to grow alternate crops. And it's also tried to help Afghanistan enforce its laws. Kevin Hartman is a former DEA special agent who's now president of the DEA Educational Foundation. In the past, what they tried to get to and took some time was a whole of government approach, and that is to do all the above. And do you think that's the most effective? Well, at this point, because of the situation and the drawdown, we're not able to do all of the above. So, what do you mean the drawdown of U.S. forces? Exactly. The drawdown of U.S. forces has uh, limited capabilities, so have to uh, do the best with the resources that we have. So, with fewer U.S. forces on the ground, which of those three elements becomes more difficult? All three. Uh -huh. but, uh, the, the one they're focusing on now is is obviously the taking out of heroin processing laboratories that are run by the Taliban. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's not so much about the crops as it is the places where those crops are being processed into something else. Not so much about the crops. Manual eradication is very labor intensive and, and involves uh, a good amount of security. So it actually does make a little more sense to hit the processing labs at a point that's further along the heroin processing procedure. And at that point, you, you really deny the most revenue from the Taliban, which is the ultimate goal. And then this idea of alternate crops, and we said that's something that's been tried over the years. General Nicholson says that the military is trying that now. What has been your experience with that? Do you think it'll work going forward? There's been some successes and there's been some failures. Um, crops, like poppy, are, are resilient, and they also, when you do harvest the opium gum, can be stored for years unlike other crops that will perish if they can't get them to market. Right, so it's just it's just more economical to grow poppies. It's more economical. E even if a farmer were to grow alternate crops, they're probably going to grow some opium and, and, and keep it hidden somewhere so if their crops uh, fail, they can go back and sell that opium to the Taliban and, and it's kind of their money in the bank. Wow. Is there a way for the Afghan government to gain more control of the production of opium, perhaps 
you had to make something like medical morphine, which could, you know, be more of a legitimate export for the country. Medical morphine is when discussed. Unfortunately, with that, we'll have to have security. In other words, every single opium poppy bulb would have to be cataloged and made sure that, that it wasn't used for other purposes. The way you're talking about it, it sounds like it's kind of a losing strategy here. Um, is it possible to get this under control with the resources that the U.S. has now? Well, let me just say that there's no one better versed on this issue than General Nicholson. And I think if he feels as though that these Taliban heroin processing labs will hurt their revenue, I think that's exactly what we should do and we should support that. Okay, but beyond that, I mean, you are talking about some pretty difficult circumstances. It's difficult terrain, it's, it's difficult circumstances, but DEA has never left Afghanistan. Once we were asked to go back to Afghanistan since the 70s, we got back in here in the 2000s. And what we're focused on, and I say we're my former agency, I was cool. focused on is right. the targeting of the top kingpin, so to speak, the highest level Afghan heroin traffickers for prosecution. But DEA has never left Afghanistan. Once we were asked to go back to Afghanistan since the 70s, we got back in here in the 2000s. And what we're focused on, and I say we're my former agency, I was focused on is the targeting of the top kingpin, so to speak, the highest level Afghan heroin traffickers for prosecution. So our theory is to prevent addiction before it starts. It's the most cost-effective way to attack the problem, and it's the least resource at this point. So we feel like that there should be additional resources, that the U.S. should lead the prevention effort, and others should follow.